What is up? Welcome to the Serving It Up podcast, where I get to know individuals through the three pillars of eat good, look good, and live great. Now, today's guest, he is famous for eating. From American Express, McDonald's, Google, to the Raptors, he's a notable nominated for Food Influencer of the Year, top 10 food Instagrammers in Canada by On Cue. He judged and tasted my food on Top Chef Canada. He has over 270k thousand followers on his food gram that is drool worthy and in more publications than I can even list. So, Mr. Eat Famous himself, my man, Ryan Hingsid. What's up, What's up? Dude? Not much, man. Good to see you, bro. It's been way too long. How you doing? Good, man. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. Thanks for coming on episode two, dude. Of course. So I'm super excited. So um, first things first, I see you got a little baby Avery in the back. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. There are uh, many, many things that have like taken over our home, but gladly she's been an amazing, incredible addition to the family. And just like in a time of life that's been insane, it's been incredible to have such a beautiful silver lining. You know what I mean? We'll get into her in a little bit. But before we get started, this is absolutely about eat good, look, you live great. Right. He, brilliant savant, a uh, French lawyer. He's also a gastronome. He said, tell me what you eat and I'll tell you what you are. So ah. That's you. Um, right. Let me know of some sort of food or drink that you'd like to have that we can sort of have on the podcast. And you suggested a drink. Yes, so I did. Let's, let's get our little bartender mixology going on. Show us what you want. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, um... One of my favorite things to partake in is whiskey. So a lot of times, even though I generally will have my whiskey neat, I do occasionally like to, you know, mix it up a little bit and have it be, the, you know, the base in something else, right? And then also my folks are from the West Indies. They're from Barbados. So I love tropical fruits and things of that nature. So what we're going to be doing is a sour pineapple. So right. we've got some whiskey. I mean, it's um, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, so... Hey, it's 5 o'clock somewhere, and I mean, Absolutely. I'm home. <laughs> I am home. Uh, so I'm using Glenlivet, probably oh. not something that people would want to... Oh. You got the 15. I'm sorry, I'm, I, don't, I don't get paid that well, but... <laughs> so I'm, I'm using some Glen. I love that you've got the same thing. We didn't even agree on that. That's, that's crazy. Good taste, though. Um, some pineapple juice. Pineapple right okay. yeah so okay and then about an ounce and a half of uh of lemon juice freshly squeezed nice 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 i've got from the bottle but you know we we improvise we make do and then of course all the all important ingredient is the whiskey so about an ounce um is what it calls for but i mean i'm gonna not have just one of these so but you start with an ounce Okay, so I start with an ounce. This guy out. So yeah, for that. But I've got myself uh, cold ice. Uh, okay. Chilled my cup. Right? Yeah. All right. So just mix all that in, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, and a cup with some ice too. So we go like this. We start with our with our Glen. Put that there, right? All right. Then our pineapple. Sorry, I've got the laptop a little high up, so people right. can't see. It being put together, but once you have the ingredients, I think that's like self-explanatory. All right, and then hey, that's it. And a little bit of a, I forgot my stir stick. Um, I'm just gonna give it a nice little, a gentle little whirl. Ooh, Ryan! <laughs> I like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Cheers, my man. All right. Cheers. Oh, not bad, right? It's like if you go right onto like a beach or something like that, that's exactly what you feel. That's what I'm trying to create. I mean, you know, we've been locked in. Yeah. For somebody who um, doesn't like to drink or like someone yeah. who wants something super strong. Right. This is the good. This is yeah. Good. All right. right. Now we've got our drink. Let's get right into it. So okay. on this podcast, I ask everybody, once again, eat good, look, and live great. Three things. Yeah. First thing, we've got to talk with Mr. Eat Famous. We've got to yeah. talk about food, dude. All of right. course. Everybody talks to you about food, about where's a favorite place to eat, all that kind of stuff. How do you become a food Instagrammer and all that? But I want to know some other stuff. So first thing I want to know is your parents are Caribbean. You guys, like yes. you said, these Caribbean descent, amazing Caribbean food culture. People know you can eat, but people don't know you can cook. 
Yeah. <laughs> you can cook. Right. So what's a recipe from that maybe from your culture Caribbean, yeah. that not it's not that you want your favorite, but it's one that you want to preserve mm-hmm. and you want to teach like, you know, okay. and down the road and all that stuff. Right. So you know what? This one actually hits both notes because it, it's definitely one of my favorites, but it's also one that I, I want to teach and highlight because it's something that gets, I think, confused with um, the way it's made by other people or in other countries or in other styles, which is Bajan mac pie. So it's like... Educate me, dude. Right. So it, it's like mac and cheese. Well, it is mac and cheese, but instead of like a creamier, softer consistency. We're talking about something a little more dense. Um, so what you would do is you would start off with <clears throat> boiling your mac and your macaroni. Uh, you're going to create yourself a nice uh, cheese sauce. Usually, the base in the West Indies is uh, like an evap. Uh, sorry, like carnation milk. Like um, what do you call that kind of milk? Condensed milk, right? Because that's big in the West Indies. Your cheese usually like a sharp cheddar or mild cheddar. Um, you're mixing that up together. And then instead of having it be a, like set in a creamy kind of consistency, you bake it. So it would go into like, like a casserole dish. You would top it with breadcrumbs, paprika, things of that nature, but you're going to bake it so that it gets, I don't want to say dry. Cause I think sometimes when we say something's dry that, you know, it lacks flavor, but it's not, it's, it's a little more, uh, firm. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's absolutely one of my favorite things. I'm a big mac and cheese lover. I love Southern style. And I mean, I'll even throw in a box of KD every now and then, but mac pie, Bayesian style mac pie is one of my absolute favorite things. And what's, what's Bayesian mean? Or like- uh, Barbados. So that's what you call people from Barbados. So that's okay. where my family's from. Yeah. yeah. Right. So Rihanna is Bayesian, right? Sure. Yeah. That's, 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 that sounds like, more my type of mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not a big creamy, wet type of mac and cheese kind of guy. I'm right. Guy, so okay, cool. That is that is cool. Good to know. Um, all right. Next thing I'm going to ask you now is, let's talk food influencers, dude. So okay. People, me and you, what we first off, people uh, probably should know how we met. Yeah. So Industry wise, etc. And that the first time we met was when you judged me on Top Chef Canada. That's right. That's right. You got to, you know, flex your stuff and go eat all these places. Yeah. The first time we met. Um, Right. So that was it. Can I, can I tell you something funny about that? So you had a, you had a great dish that day and I'm not saying that just because we're talking or because we're boys, but you did have one of the more notable dishes that day, but I don't know if you're going to remember this, but the, do you remember the thing that about you that impressed me the most that day? It's, I have to talk about it later. I'm going to ask you about that later. But okay. We'll okay. Later. We'll keep it cool. Later. Cool. But yeah, so that's how me and Ryan met. Um, Ryan, obviously from Toronto, for those that are listening, um, very influential in regards to the food scene. One of the first food uh, accounts that I followed when I started on Instagram. Um, so that was really dope. So while we're talking about that, so let's talk food influencers. Let's talk foodies. Um, do you like being called that? You know what's weird is... Um... I I used to feel weird about the word influencer because it felt like you were putting yourself above people. Yeah. Uh, what folks like yourself and I do definitely have influence. I mean, if I'm creating something and it causes somebody to do something or go somewhere, yeah, that's influential. But I always saw my followers as more of like fam than like fans or followers, right? So that term it didn't really sit well with me, but I mean, I know what people mean. I might not use it to describe myself that much. I'm not offended by it because I, I generally know what people mean by it. And although I know also the term foodie gets a little diluted, um, I, I, for myself, I prefer a food lover because I, I absolutely love food, whether it, you know Instagram shuts down tomorrow or not, I'm still going to be doing what I do, which is just enjoying great food, right? So, and hopefully sharing it. But yeah, the terms, they don't get me mad, but I mean, they're not my favorite, but I totally understand. You know, we, we need, I feel like we always need to, to label something. So if that's the label, I mean, I guess I'll wear it. For sure. For sure. Um, what are some dislikes and likes that you love about being a food lover and mm-hmm. not a food lover? And right. are there like things that you see that other 
uh, influencers or, or foodies or food lovers do that you're like, don't do that, please. Like, yeah, oh yeah. Crap. And I, I love I love talking to you about this, and I love talking to to a food food uh, food influencers like this because it comes. I come from like the chef side, and then I get yeah. to the other side at the same time. So lay it on me, dude. Let's talk. Right. So I mean, one of the things I think that irritates me the most are people that set up accounts to get free food because th that's never what this has been about. When I started, I mean, we can be very honest, like a lot of the chefs, I don't even think like, <laughs> liked us to be honest, because yeah. I think it was a very new thing. And I know a chef's space kitchen is very, very sacred, right? And if you don't enter with respect, then it can leave a, you know, pardon the food pun, but leave a bad taste in the chef or this, the, the back of house's team's mouth. And you never want to mess around with an environment that first off is so fast paced that deserves like focus and respect. So I think chefs were like a little leery when we started coming in and especially when the PR company started getting us access to kitchens and chefs had to wear two hats. So they couldn't just focus on what they were doing. They also had to now kind of, you know, show people like me what was going on or kind of give people that maybe shouldn't have been back there a peek into what goes on. So it took a while to build up trust and like solid relationships with chefs. Yeah. So I, again, that's just to say that it never was about trying to get food from people or just get popularity. So I think that's the wrong thing. I think the people that are really, really successful at this, uh, two things are, are strong content creators um, and true lovers of food. And to be a strong content creator, it's not just about having the technical skills, but I mean, it's about seeing the beauty in food and like capturing that and sharing that. So a lot of times, you know, I get, hun I've gotten hundreds and hundreds of DMs, maybe thousands about, um, hey, how, how, do I, how do I get into a restaurant and eat for free? Or, you know, um, you have maybe 10 followers and you're like, oh yeah, so how much should I charge for a post? And I'm like, man, like you have so much work to do. You have to build relationships. You have to gain trust. Like what have you done to, to have anybody want to invite you in? You know, have anybody want you to represent what they're doing? So I think that's a pet peeve that this is just an entry way to like some kind of popularity or fame or free food. I, I really started this as a passion project. Again, like influencing, quote unquote, uh, being compensated for posts, even being given a meal. That None of that existed when I started my account. So that wasn't the foundation of it. So that's probably one of the more annoying things I would say that I see from some foodies, I guess. Yeah, I think... For me, I totally agree with you. It's the one biggest thing uh, from like a chef's perspective. And I think that for anyone who wants to be a food eater or a food influencer, et cetera, is that you have to understand that for chefs and for restaurants, our margins of, of revenue is like this. It's so small. And yeah. for sometimes when, um, when accounts or people, they, they, they reach out and they're like, hey, like I can, for a post, want to give me like a meal? Or like, it's like, we're we're giving you like something that took us like eight hours or whatever to make. We're making maybe like $15 off the whole meal, like, you know, three course venue all. And then don't, don't forget you put drinks and all that stuff because you want it to look good for you to put one photo that you just take with your phone or something like that. It's not fair sometimes. Right. Um, I hear you. So for foodies, they need to understand that. Just know, like, don't ask for so much stuff. A lot of people like, right. Some people would be like, oh, can I just come and I'd love to take a photo of your French fries? Or maybe can I come and like, would you like, can I do a feature for you for anything you want me to do? But some people come in with this uh, mentality of, I want you to give me this. Yeah. They exactly want to eat that. Or they feel like this restaurant has this one dish that is super Grammy worthy or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, one thing that I always tell uh, accounts or people that, want to become food influencers or they go reach out to me and ask me like how do i approach a chef or a restaurant and i'd be like i tell them don't come when it's the most busiest time that's another thing learn to speak the lingo of a chef learn to learn the industry be with them you know if if you want to take that photo or want to go when it's like midday when they're taking their break when they're not slammed maybe after after dinner or even just stuff like you know, we'll come, we'll take your, sh we'll shoot your stuff, maybe whatever time after service, let's go out for a drink and just a thank you or something like that. It's like you said, it's about building relationships and that's all, all it really is. So, um, that's cool. I think a lot of people who are wanting to be food influencers or stuff after hearing this will be like, yeah, it makes sense.
Makes sense. Um, let's talk next thing is, I have to ask you this because uh, the people watching are going to kill me if they don't. So best and favorite spot in the GTA, dude. Okay, so my favorite spot, and a lot of times I think for influencers, this is tough to be put on the spot. You don't want to ever upset anybody or cause any hurt feelings, but I think if anyone follows me, they know I absolutely love Descendant Detroit style pizza. Shout to my guy, Chris. Um, and you know, we, we speak about relationships and that that dude is like my brother now. Like that went from being just a place that really impressed me in terms of food to, you know, I've had a, a meal with his mom. You know what I mean? Like we've sat down and like our, our, our conversations aren't even about food anymore. Our text messages aren't about food anymore, right? So I think the, like there's that much love, but also too, it's, that's just my favorite. That's my favorite meal. It's my favorite spot. I know a lot of times the expectation is to hear about, you know, some place that might be on a top 10 list or fine dining, but I, I'm just, I mean, you know, pre, pre COVID, sorry. You know, I, there's nowhere I was more comfortable. Right. And it's just, yeah, that, that's my, that's my number one. I will not disclose my number two because I'm sure a lot of people are fighting for that number two spot, but yeah, that's my number one descendant Detroit style pizza for sure. I feel the exact same because people always ask me that. And I feel like there's certain things that, you know, you don't want to say no to a certain chef or et cetera like that. Um, there's so many good spots. So the next question I got to ask you is then you put another, you put another ounce in there. A little bit. Yeah. I need, I need a little more. All right. Um, I, so one thing I like, if the guest does something, I'm going to have to follow the guest. I love it. I love it. All right, cool. All right. So the next question was, so with that being said, that was your favorite spot. So yeah. what's the most underrated spot? Oh, wow. Okay. That's a, that's a fantastic question. Um, wow. Okay. I, I love that. I, and I really want to nail it. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to just like jump to something underrated who doesn't get a lot of love that i feel like really really should okay can we come back to it i promise to answer it i just yeah i'm, I'm wow that's a fantastic i've never been asked that before dude i'm trying to trying to ask people things that no one's asked before right, right. um food trend you want to see go away <laughs> oh boy that's a that's another solid solid question um, you know, it's not specifically a specific trend, but what I hate, just hate is when something is, you know, it's only made for Instagram, like no thought was put into how the flavors work. No thought was put into how long it's going to take the team to like prep it, or if it makes use of ingredients that you already have. Like, I hate that. And you know what I also can't stand is like, are like menus that are just like, massive and I, I mean I, I love choice don't get me wrong but I don't I, I just feel like I, there's some places I go into I won't name them but I look at the menu I'm like you have to be throwing away so much stuff because like you know there'll be items that aren't in anything else in like 10 or 15 things I'm like that doesn't make sense um my boy Jordan at Tokyo Hot Fried Chicken he actually recently dropped uh something called Tokyo Ice so it's a hot chicken sandwich with ice cream and honey, but like it works. It wasn't just I get it. Like from a chef right? perspective, I, you know right away, right? So it's a it's a sweet sweeter brioche, hot honey, um, vanilla ice cream, and that and that's it. So yeah, okay, it looks crazy. It's gonna get a lot of attention just because it looks way out there, but it actually tastes good. Like I finished it. So my the trend I want to go away is people thinking like, oh, this is gonna get so many likes and so much attention and you just put it out. Like, I think that's just a disrespect to your own restaurant. And I think it's a disrespect to, to patrons as well. Absolutely. For me, my thing is I got, I'll get people coming to me like young cooks and chefs or people who have like pitching projects and stuff. And they'd be like, I've got this recipe. I've got, I've got this like item that I want to make. And they, and it's for me, it hurts. Cause then they think from it what looks the best first, like you said, and then they'll pull it in. They're like, I want it to first look amazing, have like these layers and colors and all these kind yeah. of things. I'm like, why are you putting, but why is that on? Because it needs that pop of green or I'm like, right. but it doesn't make sense. So I agree. Yeah. That's sake. So with that being said, next one is what's something that's a food trend that you, or it's, you want it to become a food trend. 
Oh, wow. Okay. What I want, honestly, um, my wife and I, we went to Mexico okay. uh, a year and a half ago, maybe now. Um, yeah, about a year and a half ago. And she was braver than I was that night. But we were, for the first, I, prior than, to that, I had one experience with, um, with insects. Okay. And it was, it was a, like a beetle stew. And it, it wasn't very good. So I was just like, uh, this doesn't work for me. But in Mexico, we had a couple of things that worked. And my wife like murked it. And I just feel like in terms of, um, and I'm a big beef eater, you know, but I know we've got to figure out a way to, to more responsibly um, deal with our meat consumption because of the, the carbon footprint of, of cows and stuff like that. So I find like alternative food sources, uh, something that's packed with protein like insects. I, I would love to see people get creative and, and kind of just bring in sources that aren't as harmful to the earth. I think that would be something really, really cool. Gotcha. And it's coming up. It's coming up. Definitely Mexico, all the Latin countries, um, you know, Alex Atella at Dom and eat with the like, ants, Renee with ants, all that. So cool. That's definitely a trend I'm totally game for as well. Um, all right. Next, we're going to go into a segment that I call in the weeds. So you know okay. what the weeds means for the restaurant industry. For those who don't know, it's when we're slammed. It's, it's when the chits are there. We're all, we're trying to get ourselves out of it. So I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions, Ryan. And cool. you're just going to rapid fire answer them as fast as you can. All right. All right Love it. it. Extra cheese or extra bacon? Extra bacon. 12 course fine dining tasting menu at the top 10 restaurant in the world or a takeout at the local spot? You know what? I'm going to say uh, the tasting menu only because I know this is rapid fire, but I went on a Michelin uh, restaurant tour of California last year. And um, yeah, it, it changed. It fully changed my perspective on like, you know, like a super heightened dining experience. So I will go with that because I had some memorable meals. Yeah. Wings or drums? Oh, um, the wings, like the flats. I, I flats. Yeah. I'm a, <laughs> you're a drum guy? I am a drum guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's perfect. Cause then I can have all the flats and you can have all the, all the drums. Acne and saltfish or mm -hmm. crab hallelujah? Crab, 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 crab. I, okay. This is going to be highly controversial. My wife's half Jamaican. <laughs> it might get me kicked out of the house. I'm not the biggest acne and saltfish person, man. Okay. Don't kill me. I had a feeling. I had a yeah. feeling like probably not that, so I switched it up. Crab and Kalaloo or curry goat with rice and peas? Oh, curry goat with rice and peas. Ah, curry goat I with rice it. and peas. I yeah. Okay. Yeah. Last one is rainbow sushi burrito or mm -hmm. overpriced avocado toast with acai bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Who's paying? <laughs> you are. I'm paying? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the rainbow sushi <laughs> oh man like yo you know what's funny like avocado toast is fancy but just some of the prices that i've seen for it it's criminal i'm all gonna right. go rainbow sushi all right, yeah dude. all right dude let's <laughs> run into the next one so let's go into look good so look good's all about health and yeah. um it's about fashion it's about aesthetics so first, right. first is when it comes to me and you we got to talk about this people ask me as a chef people probably ask I know they ask you as a food influencer, as someone who eats, where does the food go? How do you use it to stay in shape? So um, something that you and I have in common, and I didn't learn this about you until I was watching your season of Top Chef, is both of us, I guess, for lack of a better term, we're, we're chubby kids. Mm -hmm. um, me a little later in life, you, I guess, a little, uh, a little earlier. Yeah. Um, so I had a really kind of at a point in my life, a negative relationship with food. And um, prior to starting Eat Famous, I had probably lost about 65, maybe 70 pounds. So, um, you know, it kind of completely turned my life around, implemented working out, implemented, you know, watching what I eat. And then at that time when Eat Famous was starting to take off and I was starting to get invited to all these restaurants and doing much more very indulgent eating, I, I got nervous because I was like, I can't go back to that place that I'd fought so many years to get away from, right? But I still love what I'm doing. I, I, I want to see where this path takes me. So how do I manage? So I always get asked, like, how are you not 300 pounds? And I was like, man, I almost was, <laughs> you know? So I think my history had a big part of how I deal with it now. 
Uh, intermittent fasting is something I got put onto a couple years ago that helped tremendously, especially with the amount of food that I eat and the type of food I eat. I've even actually reached out to you and I, I, got, a, I got a routine from you, a workout routine that I, I had implemented for a couple months prior to COVID that was really, really helping me as well. My gym and my building shut down. So I've fallen off, to be honest, over these last couple of months. I actually can't wait to be able to hit the gym again. But um, yeah. And also too, when I'm not eating for the gram or creating content, if I'm at home, I honestly, I do try to, I mean, I don't always succeed, but I try to eat as healthy as possible. So smoothies and veggies, and I, I don't go as crazy at home. At, and then also too, Instagram is, um, it's created by me, right? It, people see what I want them to see when I want them to see it. I think a lot of times people feel like it's a 24-hour a account of my life. I, I could never eat the way that it's presented on Eat Famous. Yeah, I, I don't waste the food that I create content with and that I showcase, but I'm not eating like that every day either. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. And uh, it's cool to be able to see from your side because people ask me that all the time. You ask me, and we always talk about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I started intermittent fasting um, during COVID. Just because I'm not burning really? calories, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not using. I don't have a gym, um, so I don't have to eat as much as this. So the intermittent fasting has been working. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into this. Is so something else that we are very in common with is we're both Raptors fans. Yeah, we're Raptors fans. All yeah. right. So the question is, who is your favorite player? My favorite Raptor, and I feel like he used to get hated on so much, and then with the title, things switched up. And now there's like this big love of him that I feel a lot of it is fake, even though it should be deserved. Is, and you can ask anybody who knows me, Kyle Lowry has been my favorite Raptor for a long time. He's just tough, gritty. I know a lot of the earlier playoff years, we had some disappointments and people would point the finger and, you know, saying he's not clutch and he didn't come through. But that's always been my guy. I don't think there was a player that I was happier for than Kyle. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, he's he's my favorite rap in terms of just overall player um not jumping on bandwagons or anything like that again you could check with anybody that knows me kobe bryant was my favorite player of all time that that loss really really hurt me um i'm a lebron guy because i just love what he does often on the court his commitment to social justice and just being a beacon of inspiration and being so positive and um despite, you know, so many people constantly through his career picking away at him and being able to maintain that level of excellence that he has for so long. I really, really respect that. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you, who are some of your faves? My, I'm a Vince Carter dude. I'm okay. Vince Carter born and raised. Yeah. My, my yeah. Dad basketball. He was like the person I like, I'm 95. Like I'm a 95. Yeah. So like 95 basketball and like any summer camps and stuff. We only talked about Vince Carter and yeah. then it was Vince Carter. And then I learned about Michael Jordan. Right, right. Got those, you. Dude, those are my guys. Those are my guys. Um, but yeah, Vince Carter for sure. Um, all right, let's get into this is aside from food, aside from, you know, fitness, aside from basketball, dude, you're hella swaggy and fly when it comes to your, your wardrobe. Let's talk about this. Okay. So people, people see you on, on Eat Famous, they see the food and everything, but you're rocking some really crazy outfits there. And then on your private account, right, uh, right Hinkson, You've got some sweet outfits as well. So let's talk about that. Talk about, do you consider yourself a fashion dude? Um, and where does your style come from? You know what? I, I do. I can't lie. Um, it's, it's always been something that's been important to me. I think, to be honest, also, too, from, you know, being a kid that was a little overweight in his teens at that time when you're, you know, you're trying to date and try to get noticed. I tried to mask that with, with clothing. So that, that was like my armor. I was like, okay. Uh, I might not be the fittest, but I'm going to try to be like the freshest. Wow. And also to my pops. Yeah. My, my dad shout to him. He's like a big style guy. Like he's always cared about, you know, like how, how he looks and outfits. I remember being in high school and like going, waiting for him to go to work and stealing polo and he'll figure from his closet and stuff like that. So yeah, it's always been a thing that I kind of um, have been into. I never try to, I hope I never like, force it or whatever but it, it always matters to me yeah got you because now that you, you person, too though you kill it as well you kill it as oh, well I'm, I'm like you so i'm horrible with fashion to be honest i'm really I think so because I, I was i grew up where like you know my family would pick up my clothes for me to wear when i was growing a kid i never bought clothes or anything until i finally got into like you know like you said wanting to like 
girls to get, get attracted, get, yep. get to know people, get to go to high school and all that stuff. And then uh, past relationships, new relationships, all that. And more so now, when you're getting into a nice, I guess, fitter lifestyle, mm -hmm. clothes just fit better. But I was going to say, you, you, you have the cheat code, man, because like, you know, the physique and everything, that's not going to, it's not going to not do you any favors for yeah. sure. All right. So let's get into this. When you brought it up earlier was something, something you said to me when you judged me. So yeah. talk about it. you want to tell everybody what you said? Yeah. So, um, back on the first time that we actually met, I was aware of you. I knew who you were, but, uh, the first time we actually met, we is, uh, one of the first tapings I did for top chef and you were cooking and, the food was great. And I remember I was there with a friend and we were saying, oh, wow, like his food is really, really solid. But one thing that, <laughs> that I was there to judge food, but the first thing that struck me was I was like, this guy's going crazy in the kitchen. Like, you know, what, when a chef is in the zone and it was a contest, so I know you were laser focused and shouts to you, man, you killed it on that season. Um, but I was like, how is this guy? And it was at the end. I was like, how is this guy wearing retro 11s, the bread, so they're black. Retro. No? No. Oh, I thought you had the retro bread sign. No, they're the real. Oh. They're the okay, real. even better. Even it, more, now I'm more baffled. But we were walking out, and I was like, how are your kicks so clean? I never saw you look down. You were in the kitchen like a madman, just going nuts. Um, you know, and I was like, this guy is a soldier. Like, this guy kept those 11s clean. I was, wow, because I, 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 I'm in a lot of kitchens. I see what chefs wear. And I was like, this guy, I was like, he deserves to win the whole show just based off of this. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the first thing I noticed about you was your shoes. And then at the end of the taping, I was like, how are these shoes clean? That was when I knew, I'm like, yo, you're not just any guy. You're like, I knew, like I said, I knew of you anyways. I'm like, but we're going to be really good buds. We're gonna yeah, be yeah. <laughs> you, you noticed the food, but you noticed the details. And that was a yeah, big, man. Details is all the big things. All right, so. We'll get right into that. Next is um, another rapid fire. So okay. I'm, we're calling this reps and sets. Okay. All right. So you, and there's a couple questions you already touched on, but I'm going to change them up a little bit. So cool. Michael, LeBron, or Kobe? Man, I'm out of sentiment. Okay. I, I feel like after watching The Last Dance, I don't know how you can't say Mike. Okay. Um, Kobe was my guy. Bro I'm a Bron fan. I'm probably one of the weird people that, well, actually, you know what's weird? I, um, growing up, again, this might be worse than my Aki and Selfish thing. I wasn't the biggest MJ guy. Now, hear me out. The reason was, is my dad loved Mike. And I was thinking, like, at that time, I'm like, I don't want to like what my dad likes. So I, like, Charles Barkley was my guy back then because he was, like, yeah. against the system. And he's like, oh, I'm not a role model. And then I think it was that series. The first time the, the Bulls played the Jazz in the finals, I was like, okay, Mike's undeniable. Like, I'm just stupid to be hating on him. So I will, I'll, I'll say Michael. I'll All say right. Michael. Yeah. Right. Vince, Kai, or Kawhi? <sighs> Man, that's a, okay. So like I said, Kyle has been my favorite Raptor, but I don't think we get anything without Vince. I don't think the team stays here if we don't pick up Vince or trade from on draft day, like remember that the Grizzlies came into the league the same time as us. And, you know, they didn't last as long. They moved to Memphis. What Vince Carter did for this city and not just basketball, but for just culture, you know what I mean? For ki immigrant kids, like straight yeah. up. Um, you can't say anything but him. And I was one of those people, I'm not going to lie, that like when he left, I was very sour. It took a couple of years for me to like forgive, right? But I, I came full circle. I definitely came full circle. I would love to see him retire. I would have loved to have seen him yeah. retire as a Raptor. Um, but yeah, you, you got to say Vince. You got to say Vince. We have everything we have because of him. The Carter effect, all right, I'm going to make this public, is the probably is I think the third time or the only movie that made me cry. Okay, yo, I was going to say, I, I didn't know what you were going to say, but I was going to confess, dude, I cried. And you know why I cried? <laughs> it was, it was my because see me, I was so mad at that man, right? And then the way that they presented everything, I, I literally shed a tear. I shed a tear because I was like, right, like I was letting go of all that anger. Dude, 
for me, it was it was when we played the retirement video at the ACC, and he was watching and cried, and everybody started mm-hmm. cheering instead of thing. For yeah. me, I, I was so emotional because it was like you felt like you were with him, and like you were yeah. playing, and you're like finally everyone's like, you know forgiving him again forgiving yeah him. it was a big thing because i mean a lot of people were on my side of the fence with that like no it, w- it was bad for a while so i like shouts to you because it, it's hard it was hard to remain a vince fan because i know a lot of people probably hated on you Dude, for... I, got, I got picked up my high sp- my elementary school msn email was go underscore carter underscore walls 15 <laughs> literally my password was like vince carter 15 vince carter champion all that kind of stuff but anyway, yeah <laughs> wasn't that wild the days when our our email addresses would like include like some celebrity's name or something crazy I know, like, you, you right? would never think of just being no. your name yeah two more, two more <laughs> questions from reps and sets let's do this checks or stripes oh checks 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 all day game winning shot or in-game poster game winning shot Game winning shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Game winning shot. I love these questions, man. This is this is fantastic. I wish you had more of them. Cool. Now we're gonna get into the next subject, which is live great, dude. So we're gonna talk about life, we're gonna talk about inspiration, motivation, um, mm-hmm. being an entrepreneur, all that kind of stuff. So first thing we touched about earlier is congrats, homie. You are a father. You are Damn. a father, man. Yeah. Congrats, congrats. How does it feel to to have such a beautiful great baby princess avery how's it feel honestly it's it's weird it's one of those things that like ahead of time you know okay this is going to change your life because everybody says it's going to change your life but then you know in life like there's things that are like cliche like everybody says it and then when it happens it doesn't hold that weight because it's like whatever but no this is like completely life-changing like I mean, you know me, like I've been doing the account for so long. I'm constantly online, creating content out, you know, taking photos, immer- oh, I mean, pre-COVID, you know, being immersed in the community. And it's like now, honestly, my favorite thing is just to like lay next to her, be silly, crack jokes, let her beat me in wrestling. Like it, nothing else really holds any weight, you know, it, it's honestly the best thing. And then um what? you just what? you just want to be a better version of yourself in all in all areas so that you can give this person the best life and best experience as possible how old is uh, avery right now she turned six months old uh last week last week last friday so i wanted to sort of get into that where it must have been so different oh there she is where's cameo let me yeah let me bring her let me let me yes. let me say say hi to say hi to uncle wallace Hey, Avery. Hi. <laughs> hi, cutie pie. Hey, you going to say hi? You going to say hi? She's like, gonna hi. She's like, I'll be famous later, okay? Just yeah, so- yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so what I wanted to ask was, was it different or how difficult or if there was any difficulties preparing to be a dad during this COVID time? Because it's um, you're different. So like being a dad and birth and all that stuff is already a, a challenge. And yeah. It was like, Ryan, let me throw you something else too. Man, so I'll preface that by saying the, um, she probably, like her being here now probably kept me from losing my mind and going stir crazy. Because I know a lot of people are struggling with, you know, not seeing friends and family and being cooped inside and wondering if they're going to get sick and all that. So her now is just kind of calmed me down and brought me down to a level where I, I have to just focus on her and also be confident and be positive that we're going to have a better future. I can't accept anything less. So she was actually born on Boxing Day. So just prior, so things were going on, but it wasn't really here like that. But I mean, um, shortly after, you know, when a baby's first born, there's a lot of like medical checkups and making sure they're okay. So we were going to the hospital when there was just starting to be a little bit of concern about being in, in public spaces and medical spaces. So at a time where we were already, and she was born a little early. So we're already concerned about her being premature and making sure her weight is up and everything like that. So adding to that, like going to a hospital when you, there's no other place that probably is more scary at the time. Cause you know, you figure, Though I used to always say, like, I'd only ever want to be a, at a hospital if a baby was being born. You don't want to be at a hospital for any other reason, right? And now, 
even those times where it's like fun things like getting her weight checked and all that stuff, it gave us a little trepidation and a little bit of nerves because you're just being extra paranoid and like super, super careful. So you never want those things to pull away from the joy of like those monumental experiences. So it was definitely tough. And then also um, I, have a, I have a great, you know, social circle and a really, really close family. So for her to get to that age, you know, a couple months in when you're, you're ready to have people start meeting your kid and then, you know, you can't have anybody come over, you can't go anywhere. Um, you know, she's seeing my parents on video chat instead of being in their arms. Like that was really, really difficult. I got you. But she's here. She's here yeah. and she's gorgeous. So that's, that's all that counts. Appreciate it. Uh, all right. So for those who don't know, people are already asked, Eat Famous is not your full-time job. No. No. no, you work no. for a pretty big company. I do, <laughs> I do. I do. We'll keep that secret here, but yeah, it's crazy to watch you balance that because a lot of people, mm -hmm. um, me included, social takes a lot of time. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. To do it in a good quality with quantity, and mm. to do it where, like for you, you got to go to someone's uh, for their schedule and all that. Yeah, kind of so it's hard. Have yeah. you found that it's been even harder with Avery? Or oh, for sure. Of course. Yeah. A million percent. Um, I think I used to always get asked like, Hey, when are you leaving your job? When are you going to quit? And I used to think that that was the definition of being successful at social or being successful as an entrepreneur was like, if you had the means or the income to, to leave your job. And then when I was striving for that, I was, you know, kind of like running towards that. And then when I kind of got to a place where I feel like, yeah, I could probably support myself and contribute to the fam. And I was, I still didn't leave. And I was like, okay, is that, is it fear? Is it the loss of security? But I really truthfully felt like I was just like, I can handle both. I've always been a person that has done more than one thing. I feel like I've, I've always had like a part-time job at least since I was probably about 14, 15. And then after school, you know, always had, I've always worked and I've always done something in addition to work. So, I mean, back in the day for a couple of years, I honestly, I was taking music serious, like tried to have a, a rap career. After that, um, I was working on um, like a, a semi-pro men's basketball league as their, their marketing manager. Uh, I used to write for Trent Hunter, an online magazine. So I've always had like a side hustle that it, at sometimes is felt as weighty as like a nine to five. So I feel like I was built for that and used to going really, really hard. With Avery now, I mean, you want to dedicate as much time to being there for your for your child as possible. But then also too, it's like, not just to like give them things, not just about like physical things or material things, but it's like, you wanna be able to provide opportunity and experience, right? So it's like, you go hard, but I think you work smarter. So actually right now, I'm uh, just last week, I started um, uh, pat leave. So I'm on, I'm off for like six months just to be like full-time dad. Yes. Yeah. Win. Yeah, man. Win. That's amazing. That's so yeah. cool. Um, yeah. Do the people at your work obviously know your, who you are? Or So at first I, I used to try to do, except for my really close friends at work, I tried to keep it a secret. And then I think it was probably probably the first time I was on breakfast television <laughs> I think I took like a sick day <laughs> or a vacation day and then I remember I get in the next day and there's like a couple of emails from people that aren't even on my team like just different departments or different divisions within the company and I was just kind of like ah and then I, you know I had a talk with my boss and like she thought it was great so it's, it's actually been positive at first I, I was a little afraid just because you never know what a company might think yeah. if you're looking to be if you're perceived as pursuing something that doesn't have anything to do with your job right so um yeah but everything's been cool so far awesome um uh, cool so, and you touched on it a little bit so people they know you as ryan they know you as eat famous but the real people from the streets know you as rhino so what is rhino who is Yo. Rhino? <laughs> Who do you have on your research team? All the people. Man, so as I, as I mentioned before, um, I used to try to do the music thing really, really serious. Um, the rapper guys. <laughs> um, you know, and it 
it was just it was a love music is definitely one of the things I'm, I'm most passionate about even just as like a fan that's something else from my from my family that I get like music in my house you know TV would be on but it would more be like my parents listening to the radio and playing records and you know we we were just heavily immersed in music and I always just wanted to do it for the longest time that's all I could see myself doing so Ryan no <laughs> it's an alter ego that's way 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 back in the past I mean we I actually even had a song that for a little short 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 time was played on flow for a little bit yeah, um any song I was trying so hard <laughs> I, I wanted to play it on I'll, I'll, I'll send you something that's crazy that you could dig that up I'll send you something but yeah that um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like everybody wants to do music at some point i think we all think <laughs> yeah, everybody <laughs> that we're like, we're like something. yeah something something sure. um can you spit something for us ah uh, maybe at another time maybe at another time maybe a couple more of these I, I'm, I'm yeah we need a couple more uh, uh sour pineapples all right so with that being said how long was the rap career like um honestly it was probably like man seven years eight years like it was it was a long time maybe longer than that i mean in terms of like actively pursuing it and trying to do shows and recording and stuff like that yeah like close to 10 for sure um and then it just kind of i was in a group and you know we we're like it's like family and uh you know as you grow you everybody kind of has different ideas of what things should be or look like and then that kind of we all took a break a little bit from the group and I think that because those are like valuable personal relationships to me and you want to put relationships first that kind of put the music behind um but I mean even every now and then I still I still mess around with it you know or you like I have a, a cousin a young cousin who produces my cousin Brandon Niles who's um really really dope he's done some stuff for people in the city and every now and then he'll send me a beat and i'm like aha man i'm trying to like you know jump on that so that's dope we gotta i gotta we gotta have a session we gotta have a session yeah he throws you a beat you go think i'm a cook on the side and we'll just buy i like it, it. We'll i like it a real cookout okay i'm gonna talk about something next that um we can go on more about it down the road but yo you're blue check verified dude finally yo check <laughs> finally yo i try to be honestly in life i try to be like a, a humble grounded person only, only 270k yo i'm saying like i uh i'm happy for it please don't take it away instagram but yeah i i mean i honest i feel like i could have been verified a while ago but um you know i'm i'm happy with that i can't front i can't have it um and yeah the thing I wanted to bring that up was, besides being congrats, was you also you wrote something against um, it's our current times. We, we, me and you talked about this a couple of weeks ago, yeah. um, and you wrote recently that you, even though you're blue check verified and everything, you sometimes might have a Kanye esque breakdown. You know, you, and you also wrote that IG might be you know looks fine right now and everything, but it's not. It's totally not. Yeah. And and we're talking about, you know, obviously the current state of the world and mm -hmm. uh, racial inequality, Black Lives Matter, everything. Mm -hmm. And you, you and me, we've talked like behind scenes personally about all these kind of things, yeah. like how we feel and all that. And I think we can go into like another time before that. Mm -hmm. um, but what I wanted to talk to you about now is for you, you, use, you have this big platform, it's such a big platform that... I see in the last couple of weeks, you've really tried to use it to spread awareness and use your voice in the most positive way possible to target what we've been talking about. And yeah. for me as a chef, something I want to talk about is what are you been bringing up is what are some black owned restaurants and brands and organizations that we should be talking about, not just now because of, right yeah um but in general because right. like one one of the restaurants i i see that kind of sucks is like auntie lucy's right yeah yeah they're they're a black owned uh burger joint their stuff looks amazing mm -hmm. but they they literally i think they opened this year and then yeah, they opened june 3rd yeah they opened june 3rd and then now they have to close down because the the renter 10x their rent right? yeah because they're doing so well apparently 
Yeah, so that's green and stuff. So I, I really want to talk more about, I want the people to know about some, some of these black owned uh, restaurants and organizations that we all should be there and support. Right. Dope. And you know what, and honestly too, shouts to you, man. Like um, you were one of the first people to reach out. I think um, it, w- it was a tough time and I know I wasn't, I wasn't silent about it and I can understand I, I think of a couple people that I maybe expected to reach out might have been a little afraid or not know what to say. And I totally understand and appreciate that. But I really respect you for for being out front early and wanting to do something. And the idea that we talked about, I still really want to pursue. Um, I think that's going to play a part in, in healing. I know we have a lot of work to do before I guess we start to heal. But I wanted to honestly thank you for that. That meant a lot. I know I don't know if we ever really got to discuss it past you know, planning, but just the appreciation I had for you being one of the first people to say, hey, Rye, like this is going on. And I, I don't know exactly what you're feeling, but I know it's tough. I, I really respect you for that, but I was so love. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's just so, there's so many people. And I think that's the crazy thing is like, we're seeing people now get highlighted in accolades and like people like myself and, and other uh, content creators of color are, are, we're seeing like a spike in looks from brands and and companies who want to work with us. And I mean, that all that's good and fine. But I mean, like a company would be crazy if they think that I'm not like thoroughly vetting them before. Like you can't just reach out to me and think, okay, because you want to do work or you want to put some money in front of my face that we're going to do something. Like I need to know your stance on inclusion and diversity and your plans for moving forward to make sure that at all levels, your company's representative of, um, you know, this country that we live in, right? So it's 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 a funny time. Um, I mean, in terms of of restaurants, there's so many. There's there's great spots like Beach Hill Barbecue. They um, just opened uh, their second location. So their first one is on Main Street. It's some of the absolute and not because they're black, not just because of this is what we're talking about. Some of the best barbecue I've had in Toronto. Um, both of the gentlemen that run it have roots in the states one text the their pit master uh in texas specifically you know and they they do uh fantastic work incredible food kind, some of the kindest people yeah and they just opened a new spot on on danforth um but you know what i would love to love to speak to in terms of restaurants too is there's um I was on a call a little while ago with a bunch of chefs and restaurant owners, some media people, some creators, and we were, this was early into COVID. And we were talking about, you know, how the restaurant industry is going to look post COVID and what we can all do to kind of help. And what I was really quiet through most of the call, <laughs> which is odd, but at the end I asked one thing because a lot of the restaurants and the people that were looped in were like people in the downtown core. So, you know, folks that the restaurants are known people that have access to just that general buzz or that stream of you know publicity that kind of hits but i said you know what about you know the the thai spot in scarborough or you know a falafel place in in brampton that isn't cool that doesn't have social media so i think for me i would love people to start hitting you know the the west indian restaurants that maybe aren't super cool or super known there's there's spots like island spice flavor on pitfield that we absolutely love spots like albert's on eglinton west like i mean pat's home style on queen i mean they're downtown but still you know these little spots that you may not see and like i mean shouts to my brother adrian who was on top chef like you um but i mean adrian would be the first to tell you right like he's he's got profile he's known so there there's weight to his name people like yourself who you know whether it's because not just because you guys are talented but you know you're young you're creative you're in kind of like the eye so even if you're not the most you're not you might not be white but like people know you guys right but what my real concern really lays with the spots that are you know, outside of the city or that aren't social media savvy or don't have somebody cool or popular to be the face of that. Um, you know, I, I encourage people to take a drive to, to Scarborough down Eglinton West, find these kind of spots. Like I have been trying to definitely highlight them um, on my account too. There's also fabulous just like in-home cooks, like people that cook at home that you can message them and they'll, they'll bring food to you. Queen Bee Kitchen 
uh, some of the best mac and cheese I ever had. I know we were talking about Bayesian style mac pie earlier, but in terms of a traditional creamier mac and cheese, uh, there's Eat Blessed, there's uh, Chomp Matic, who uh, Chomp Matic Kitchen, I believe. They're, they're, I'm going to be connecting with uh, their owner soon. Um, wow, there is uh, Jogo Juice. They do a hibiscus based juice. They're black owned. Um, I would say anybody who's not following Black Foodie Co., do mm -hmm. that right now on Instagram. Um, Hongra, Edin, uh, Kema, and Ellen, they do a fantastic job of highlighting, you know, all things not uh, food is their base but all things that have to do with black culture and uplifting you know the people in the movement and they, they i i just can't ever say enough about them the uh buy blacks is a great organization that highlights and focuses on the needs of people of color inside of the city they do fantastic work uh, the black health alliance i mean the, the thing is you know i sometimes we can't complain about or, you know, we can't really be concerned because there's times I'm, I'm like, my mind's blown. I'm like, how is the world only turning an eye to this stuff now? And it, although that's a little sad, I mean, okay, we're here now. The focus is now we've got the attention. So it's the time to, to highlight people and to really, really delve in. But I mean, it's not like we've got to dig super deep. Like these people oh. are here. And I think that's what happens with a lot of uh, people of color, all people of color is like, we're seen, but we're not, you know what I mean? Um, so it's it's a situation where I feel like if we just look or ask questions, like just how like, I mean, you're asking me in this forum, but I know you're also the kind of person that would ask that personally. I think people just have to step up and, and you know, expand their circle of friends and not just only associate with people that look like them or that people are from the exact same place as them, because then it just becomes a natural part of your day. Agreed. Right, like me and your boys, I, I'm going to tell you about all the kind of places I go to, West Indian places, Italian place, whatever. It's going to come because we have a natural relationship, and I think a big part of this is that people don't have a lot of natural, organic relationships with people outside of their immediate group, and that's a huge problem. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And I'm definitely going to put all those all those organizations and things onto the couch so everyone can figure out. And also, I want to quickly shout out um, Suresh. So we yeah. used to do all these tours on these like little always all around the places, Brampton, Mississauga, mm -hmm. you know, your Markhams, your Scarboroughs. So yeah, those yep. hundred percent. It's just exposure. We just yeah. got exposed and get show comfortable, it. you know, get out of I our think there's a lot of discomfort with like, you know, going to different neighborhoods. And I mean, not to say that Toronto and Canada is perfect. Right. Um, but I mean, there, we're in a we're in a safe space, you know. If you're curious about a certain cuisine or a certain type of people or food or culture, like you can go to that neighborhood, you'll be safe, you'll be fine. Like, I, I really wonder what keeps people away sometimes. And I know, you know, it's human sometimes. There's obviously comfort in what we know, but we have a great opportunity to branch out here and Absolutely. experience different things. And we really need to just take more advantage of it. For sure. All right, dude. So. We're gonna go get into our last sort of rapid fire. So we're calling this one YOLO. So okay. let's do this. Biggie, J or Nas? <laughs> um, jeez, wow. Come on, homie. So in my opinion, the three best rappers of all time, of I all know. time, like- I know, which is why I threw them there for you. <laughs> wow, Biggie, Jay-Z or Nas? Honestly, and this is not a cop out, I feel like this answer to this question literally changes depending on like my mood. Okay. Um, what I'm listening to. Honestly, honestly, there there I don't think there are three. I don't think there's anybody better than the three of them. We'll let, that slide. We'll let your answer slide. <laughs> do you have do you have an answer? Me? Do you have it? Yeah. I, I have to go with Jay because that's just my era that I grew up. Right, I got you. Was a little too early. Nas was a little too early. Jay yeah, was in the mainstream, and so right. I can only I'm I can't front and pretend to be hardcore and be like, yeah, I was all all pop and, and Nas and Biggie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. right. Would you rather be a rapper or a chef? <laughs> Yo, I would rather be a, a rapper. You know what's funny is I get asked all the time, all the time, um, would you ever open a restaurant is that the next step hell no i love you bro 
I love what you do. I love your profession, but you have to be a little, <laughs> you, you can admit it, right? Like I, it's the, it, the restaurant business is the only business where the people in it, even the ones who do well, will tell me don't open a restaurant. That's my, my grandma. Such hard work. My grandmother, she tells people, and she told me when I was a kid, like, if you ever want to get revenge on someone. Yeah. Just simply introduce their family or loved ones to the industry. <laughs> That's, that's For real. what she says. Yeah, that's crazy. It's true, though. I mean, like, I had, um, you know, I spend a lot of time in restaurants and, like, there's no way. And I love it. Agreed. I mean, you know, the, I'm not to make light of COVID because it's an extremely serious situation. But, um, you know, I really, really, really want this industry, excuse me, to survive. Like, yep. not just because of what I do, but because I absolutely love, I love food. I love restaurants. I love the people in it. Like, there's just something about the vibe in the community that I absolutely love. And I also think, too, you know, just touching back to what we were talking about, about the whole Black Lives Matter thing and racial equality, I feel like a lot of times food is the best bridge to understanding and, um, you know, making those kind of new connections. So I need the industry to to be there when we get past all of this, right? But um, bro, like, no, I'll never open a restaurant. I would be like an investor yes. in a restaurant, That's but to topic. open one, no. It's like, you. when do you sleep? It doesn't, you know. You right, think, no. I think a, having a baby is hard, no. Yeah. Baby that needs more I'd have 10 babies. <laughs> I'd have 10 babies before I open a restaurant. Well, that was the funniest thing. The next question was, would you have another child? You know what? Um, I mean, I think after you do, there's not you. There's no way. I mean, a lot of times, like time, energy, the expense. But like, I like I don't know anything that that's made me happier. Like my raps that I adore won the title. I got to go to a finals game. Like all, I've had fantastic experiences. I've got to travel the world. You know, I'm mean? married to my best friend. Like. I, my life is fantastic, but like in terms of um, joy, like I don't know if there's more pure, pure joy than that. So I, the answer would be, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for that's, sure. That's I don't that's, know if that's all up to me, <laughs> but yeah. Your answer, amazing. Mm -hmm. that's awesome. All right, so we're going to go into our, our last thing here, dude. So I'm going to actually yeah. share my screen and we're going to go into something called social hour. Okay. We're going to do a little deep dive into some of your, you know, your social stuff. We're going to take some okay. of your stuff and we're going to just chat about it and give it a real quick behind the scenes stories about what's what. Cool? Okay. So I'm going to share the screen here. <laughs> See, I wasn't lying. All right, dude. So you sort of touched about this earlier. So yeah, this one right here. How, how much did you weigh on the left? On the left, I was probably 240 pounds, 240-ish probably. Not too fat. Yeah. Like, like if you put that weight onto that size, like I guess for me, it's, I'm a little biased because of like bodybuilding and like I see yeah, 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 yeah. Guys and like, so that's not, you carried it pretty well, but I can tell like from your arms and stuff, that's definitely more like torso and. Oh, it was. Yeah, definitely. Everything just goes to the middle. Um, thank God for hip hop and just like B-boy aesthetic, because like at that time, like you're wearing, you know, double XL shirts and size 42 pants anyway, even if you're your size, you're like, <laughs> right? So you're wearing shorts under your jeans. Exactly. Yeah, completely, completely. Right. So that helped that, that really, really saved me. Looking super dapper here, homie. Appreciate it. Appreciate right. it. Next one. We have yes. to shout out. So yeah, we a lot. This was I always say a a, ver, a king always needs a queen. Indeed. Right. You're only as good as your your significant other. Who is this wonderful woman right here? This wonderful. Uh, that is my wife, my best friend, Tanil Chisholm Hinkson. Um, we had known each other for years we're friends for years i actually and i can say this because she knows this i hated her the first day i met her <laughs> a long long time ago i was like i don't like that girl <laughs> yeah i was like i don't like that girl maybe it's because i wasn't with her but um yeah it, it's crazy we had we've had like an incredible 
journey and wild wild ride and that's like totally my rock and also too a big huge part of why um <clears throat> eat famous is as successful as it is because you know she allows me to like work so hard I, i've missed so many meals at home and had to have been out like building when i was trying to really really build with her understanding um you know taking trips across the world solo right because they were work trips and stuff and she's not do not just like understanding about what i got to do but like supportive like pushes me so hard and like biggest cheerleader so yeah shouts to her she's the best awesome shout outs to the mom shout out to mommy yeah definitely right. definitely next one all right my man so yeah obviously you've got the aesthetics going on and everything like that but i chose this because i want you to talk about what is the, the caption behind this what yeah you wanting to teach people advisory committee right and the whole thing about the notable awards so what's your i wanted to hear about what's the story behind your thoughts on teaching the new, newer generation or the younger? Man, so it's it's really important i would say like you know i've been really i and i always say like yeah i know i worked hard and i feel like eat famous is a solid account but i know i also had like timing on my side like i got in early when it was easier to grow authentically and like when all the the really important relationships were being established and like you, we just had more access to people that you know could help you grow because i've probably been doing this like seven years and you know it, through like whether being nominated for different awards and getting to do some TV and you know stuff like that like even how we met like being asked to like judge on Top Chef or rate some food like all these kind of crazy things that I've been able to do are, are great but a couple of years ago I started doing some speaking engagements in partnership with the Toronto Public Library that were you know aimed at, at youth and whether that was like inspiring youth who may be a little bit off the path or teaching young people about how to become entrepreneurs and create their own lane in terms of charting a career path like nothing and i know it might sound cliche but it's so true like those are where you feel like man i've really done something like if somebody trusts me to talk to kids and to tell kids what i've done especially when i think about how many mistakes i made when i was young i would never think i'd be here so i think that's a that's a high honor like to i mean i, I was probably the same for you like you know you can cook you've probably cooked for some like very impressive people or at great places but i i'm i'm guessing when someone's asked you to teach somebody how to do something whether it's a demo or a one-on-one -on -one lesson when you're like okay i've i've got to a point of my craft where someone wants to know what i do i think that's just the best man like that's that is really like you know it's funny because i always say like those who can't teach but i don't believe that i i honestly don't believe that I've, i it's a high honor to me yeah agree all right next one dude it is boom yeah yeah <laughs> they never should have let me in i you know what's funny is um i uh oh, man shout out to my boy corwin miller um that's actually someone else another person he's just like literally like corwin dot miller i believe at instagram.com or barcode marketing at instagram a uh, good friend of mine just like follow him and just like he can literally put you in touch with anybody that you need to know in your industry like he just knows everyone like i thought i know a lot of people you walk down the street with this guy and if it's supposed to be a 15 minute walk it's a 45 minute walk because you're bumping into somebody you know someone whose life he's affected for good um i think he had told me about an event and so this is before i had a partnership with google i believe because I, I did some work for google where I, I hosted some workshops with scott vivian when the google um mini home and uh, the pixel 2 had come out but i remember i was just at a talk at google and i was like they never should have let me in because i just knew the weight of being in that building and i was like let me absorb any of this energy and it's just gonna help me level up and that's how i was feeling i was like you should, they never should have let me in because let me like breathe that air and you know I'm, I'm gonna do something with it anytime i have an experience where i feel like grateful to be there or i'm around um people that just think and produce on a higher level i just try to absorb that and and, and channel it out myself Dude, i am it's one of those places that 
like if I ever am honored and humbled enough to be able to do something in there or with them or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's what's like that. It would like just launch me, but yeah. That's, yeah. That's dope. Super proud of you, dude. Appreciate it. Appreciate right. it. Last one. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one's gonna be an interesting one. I, I really like this one. Okay. Do you remember this one? Um, Oh my gosh, that's crazy. So, you know, what's crazy is the blue check, like the, the morning when I got the blue check, uh -huh. I was just um, commenting. I was thanking somebody who had me on like their IG live and I hit like post and my comment went up and I saw the blue check next to it. And I was kind of like flinched and did a double take. And then I went to my account and I saw it and I was like, I was happy. Yeah. I was really, really happy. Like we were home and like, you know, my wife was showing me love and we're kind of like celebrating it and whatever. But to be honest, like this, I, man, I probably danced in the street like 5,000 because at that time, like none of that happened. Like those numbers were super rare. Mm -hmm. um, shout to, uh, to T.O. Finest and to um, Taste Toronto. I remember when I was starting, and I mean, they're still two of the biggest and best food accounts in the city. Uh, but like at that time, oh. literally when you looked up, like there was nobody else that was up there. Like, um, and if I, maybe, I don't know, maybe they were at 20 or 50,000 at the time when I hit five and I was like, oh man, I'm trying to, you know, do these kind of numbers. And, um, yeah, that, that was really like, those milestones were, were super special, man. I don't forget these days. That was cool. Yeah, I wanted to just bring that up because I don't remember this at all. Good, good, but it was cool. cool. Yeah, it, for me, it was also cool to see the progression of photos. Oh, dude, bro. <laughs> so I, I actually do. I do. Um, like I said, I did the stuff at the library, and then I also do different webinars and and speaking engagements where I talk to people about growing their their followings and you know having some success on social media. And one of my most effective slides are when I use photos from way back versus the new photos. And I mean, I'm talking about photos older than these ones. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I was just like, I don't even know how I made it, to be honest. I don't even know how I, yeah, That's it's crazy. Cool. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing this. Now. All right, dude, so pretty much that wraps up the show, dude. And I wanted to just first off and just say thanks. Thanks for being on episode two, dude. You're a busy guy. You're a busy dad. Yeah. Um, so proud of you, dude. Like, just appreciate honestly, it, man. So freaking proud to see all the things you've done and everything you're still doing and able to do. Um, and it's just the beginning. Think about it. Yeah. You're really getting blue checks now. Just the beginning. <laughs> true. But true. Uh, I wanted to sort of end this off and then give you sort of this this um, this here. Say whatever you want. Shout whoever you want. Um, where can people find you? All that kind of good stuff you already know. So mm -hmm. stage yours, Ryan. Thanks, man. First of all, thank you for for having me. Uh, it's an honor. You know, anything you do, I'm a I'm a fan of. Since I saw you keep those days clean, that you can't do any wrong, in in my books. But no, honestly, bro, I'm like saying to you, congrats. Like, I mean, it's it, it the span of time in which you've just become somebody that everybody respects, somebody to know, somebody that's just done so many things. It, it's really, really crazy. And just a testament to like your talent, but not only that, just like the personality, you've always just been like a solid, good, humble, fun person to be around. And I mean, you know, a lot of us have, have skills and talent, but it will only get us so far. Like the, you're, you have to be a person that like, people want to be around and work with. So shouts to you for doing this and everything that you do. Um, as for me, man, I, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a weird time. Like I, I really feel like I've, I've kind of wanted to focus my energies on using the platform for good, for speaking up. Like you, you said, you know, it's, um, I remember when you, you know, you had approached me about, about trying to do something because you really wanted to help and make people feel better and shed some positivity. And I know kind of everybody's schedules were all over the place and you want to pull in a bunch of people and we were all like busy, but still affected. And I, I think I, I remember telling you like, you know, this stuff is for the long haul. So we'll have time. We're, we're going to get that event done because a big part of this is knowing that like, 
you know, the journey towards equality is, is not a short road. You know what I mean? Um, so for any, I, I've lost, I don't, we didn't really touch on it, but I've over, when I started speaking out, I lost a lot of followers, uh, thousands of followers, you know? It was a detox. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And you know, what's funny is, um, I, you know, actually, I think, uh, your guy, Phil, Chef Walty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I remember Phil hit me up and he was really, really positive. And he was like, you never know. Like even some of those people might just, it might not even be on some racism. It might be like people that just kind of look to you for, you know, just food or that, you know, maybe it's too heavy for them. And I was like, all that's good and fine. But I was like, you know, this isn't, um, it's not a black problem. I think like, you know, people look at it they're like, oh, this is a black problem. I don't want to hear about this. Or these people are complaining. Like this is a, a human issue that we're in the middle of like this is like COVID like you know if you scroll through Eat Famous there's a pray for Paris hashtag when they're the the you know the attacks were in happened in Paris there's a Boston strong hashtag when the marathon got attacked you know what I mean Bourdain who's one of my inspirations like I talk about him you know what I mean we celebrate pride I don't lose followers when I talk about that stuff yeah I just don't you know what I mean? Like it, the, the, the numbers are there. And although, like you said, I, and I agree, it's a detox. It, it's still, it's still telling that, you know, we've got work, but um, I, I guess I want to say like, you're still going to get delicious food from me. You're still going to get fun content. You're still going to get positivity, but you will also still be getting these messages because it's, it's for the long haul. So like love and respect to everybody who's still rocking with me, who still supports, who still follows, who doesn't mind when I, I'm a little serious or when I'm ranting or if maybe yeah. the all caps comes. Um, but yeah, and yeah, I mean, you know, as much as we've been in a, a crazy year and uh, my wife and I were just talking about it earlier, we are literally out for a walk and just sitting on a bench and we just wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about gratitude. And we, she went through a list of things she's grateful for and then I went through a list of things I'm grateful for. And I think at a heavy time, it's easy to forget all the the millions of great things and great people that like touch us and keep us up. So it's not to not to say that things are fixed at all, because I mean I'm still angry, I'm still motivated, but also shout to everybody who like spreads love, people like you that reached out that want to help, because that's the only way we make it through, man. So yeah, that, I think that's it. Sweet. All right, dude. So that's a wrap. Thanks, guys, for watching the Serving Up podcast with my guest, my boy, Ryan Hinkson. What's good? Oh, underrated. We, we <laughs> I came away from that. So do you know what? You know who? I don't know if you – do you know Victor from La, La Novella? He had a food truck called La, La Novella, and he's a brick and mortar called Atomic 10. And I feel like – I saw you post about Atomic 10. Right. So I feel like a lot of times people that, say, do festivals or have food trucks – if you don't have a brick and mortar or if you're not on a list, a lot of times you f are seen as like, okay, you're okay for something quick or casual or whatever. This guy can cook. Um, and I, I don't, I don't know if the, maybe just the right people haven't had his food yet, but like shout to him. I feel like I, I knew about him cause I experienced his food and his food should be something I hear about. Cause I hear about a lot of stuff. So I think like my guy, Victor, at Atomic 10, I feel like he's super underrated. I feel like if you eat his food, you'd be like, how do I not know about this guy? Got you. Yeah. Right. Well, appreciate it. I know you got Avery to take care of. So thanks for having me. And of course. Being here. Thanks, Cheers. brother. Cheers.